Good afternoon shopkeepers and do-it-yourselfers out there in YouTube land. Today we're working on a trailer. Got two 7,000 pound Dexter axles on it. And uh, it happens to be mine. But I'm putting new tires and wheels on it. There's the, the original wheels or the wheels that I'm taking off. They weren't the original. They were just that modular wheel right there not that particular one that one was picked up off the interstate you can see it's dented there on the bottom but anyway we got these at a at an rv shop dag on it uh, surplus and i don't know i put probably 25 or 30 thousand miles on them and uh, one of them over there on the other side is pretty bald and uh, but the the brake shoes were getting pretty thin and starting to get some wear on the magnets so I don't know how many miles these shoes have got on them but they are as far as I know the original and uh, I put new magnets on it probably three years ago when I repacked, replaced and repacked the wheel bearings. But anyway, so I'm going to teach you a little bit about electric brakes if you don't know anything about them. I'm going to assume that you got sense enough to know how to jack up a vehicle and, and secure it. Uh, don't jack up your axles by the center. Uh, you want to stay out close to the, to the, to the leaf spring here. Uh, so you don't damage your axle uh, especially if your trailer is loaded but anyway uh, it's cheaper when you buy brakes for your electric trailer to uh, just get a backing plate though it's not necessarily an inexpensive endeavor it is cheaper to get the whole plate the whole assembly so you get new springs new shoes and a new magnet and these have what the originals didn't have they have an adjusting system on them that works uh, when when the shoe expands when the when the wheel is rolling you got a right and a left and your your brake cam for your magnet goes to the front of the vehicle so on the left side it'll be over here instead of here but anyway when when you going down the road the wheel is turning clockwise and it as it passes this magnet going that way when the brake is applied there's an electric signal ranging from 0 to 12 volts or 14 volts depending on if i guess if your alternator's cranking out voltage um, and depending on how you have your module set you get voltage coming through here and it creates a magnet that that magnet rides on this surface of the drum right here and it it creates a magnet and it pulls forward and you see up here you got a square cam that spreads your shoes out and when that spreads out when that spreads out that pulls on this cable and there's a pivot point and it comes down here and let's see if I can It works this cam here that'll throw and adjust this this wheel right there. So see how, see how that works. So when you're going forward, it will adjust that brake, but only in the forward direction. And uh, without this cable, ever so often you have to reach, you have to uh, raise your vehicle up so you can spin the wheel. And, uh, well, these don't have it. See, this one don't have the cable. It has the two holes here. You have to reach through them holes with the tool and spin your adjusting. Uh, I about need pliers to do it. But anyway, you rotate this to expand that, and that keeps your shoes spread out and, and 
not snug against the drum but where you don't have so much slack so then as soon as this starts to move you're going to start getting contact with the the braking uh, material but anyway you get your uh, vehicle jacked up get your wheel off take your center cap off and then you got a a cotter pin you take off obviously and uh, take this nut off it's all as far as I know they're all right hand thread so righty tighty lefty loosey and wiggle and pull your bearing off and uh, this uh, system has the uh, kind of like the D uh, the flat spot on the spindle and that thrust washer has got a flat spot so it won't rotate and that keeps that nut from wanting to spin but you still want to use a cotter pin through there anyway you take your drum off get it out of the way and then there's five on on this 7,000 pound axle uh, on Dexter some of them might have more or less depending on the axle rating and the manufacturer but it's got five uh, 3 8 bolts takes a 9 16 nut and there is a lock washer on there take your five nuts off and pull your backing plate loose and then you got your uh, wires these are have been cut kind of short but we still got a little bit of slack and your new brake shoe plate has got plenty of of uh, wire slack uh, so when you connect them and I like to use uh, I'm not really sure what they call these but uh, gang wire connectors and you put your your wire I cut that end off so there's no bare wire showing and you put the wire in that hole down in there all the way and on on one side you'll only have you'll have one wire from the wheel one wire from the wheel and the other wire is from the axle uh, one of those two wires so one of those two wires and one wire from the wheel will go in there and you push them in till they bottom out and then you take a pair of pliers and you squeeze this blue piece in till it's flush with the clear and it's packed with the dielectric grease so it seals it and but it these are pretty nice connectors and you can see that the wire goes between those those uh, forks or knives like and it, it cuts past the insulation and makes a pretty good connection all of the uh, new manufactured trailers that I've ever seen with electric brakes have had a connector like this on there and they're not problematic you you can you can reach in there and pry these apart and uh, reuse them I almost prefer to do that rather than use a, a, a open air butt connector uh, but anyway you can get a bag of these online get like maybe 50 of them for I don't know eight bucks or something like that but they're pretty nice and then on the other side you'll have three wires because you'll have one from the the the, the module coming from the truck that's one one going to the wheel and that's two that's one of these wires here and one going to the axle so that'll be three so you'll that you on the on the left side it's generally on the left side anyway you'll use all three holes in each one so you'll have uh, two of these on each wheel two of those on each wheel one wire going to one and one wire going to the other okay and uh, let me see if I can get my camera set up here and we'll we'll show you putting that on okay we're set up there now I just I just set my brake uh, plate up there on the on the spindle I don't bolt it just leave it hang up there out of the way and that uh, 
kind of like having a third arm and have your pliers handy for your crimping you're going to take one wire from the shoe and put it in the hole and make sure it goes all the way to the bottom and take one wire from your axle and put it in and make sure it goes all the way to the bottom and it doesn't matter if you're top and bottom in the three holes of the connector or not side to side opposite one side or the other doesn't matter hold your wires in and uh, get my hand down here where I got torque leverage and uh, squeeze the blue piece in it goes in all the way and your dielectric grease will kind of spooge out the end and those connectors are are pretty good that, that wire will not pull out so then you've only got two wires left one from the axle and one from the shoe and do the same thing with that make sure it goes up that one's been pushed in how'd that get pushed in what it needs a bigger pair of pliers Okay. A one from the axle. Now your your wire for your brake goes through the axle. Your 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 wire goes from one side to the other inside the axle tube and it goes in one hole on that side and comes out a little hole on this side. And that hole should be on the back side of the axle so that it's number one kind of protected from road debris you know if you used to run over somebody's mattress or something laying in the road it wouldn't catch your your brake wiring and also it helps to keep the uh, the the elements rain snow ice salt all that stuff so you can see that you got the two connectors, one wire going to the brake, and one wire going to the brake. And, uh, and then you pick up your backing plate and set it up there on the, on the five studs. Go around, put your lock washers on there. And, uh, It is kind of a dirty job, but I think I bought these backing plates. Well, I know I bought them at a at a at a wholesaler, and uh, I think they were eighty-five or ninety dollars a piece, and that was with the forward motion adjusting uh, or the self adjusting uh, obviously it's forward motion but you don't want to put your your shoes on the wrong side because you don't have that much braking power um, in reverse you do have braking power but you don't have that much because uh, there's not that much movement and uh, it used to be I know that your your brake shoes your front shoe was shorter than the rear your front one being your uh, your um, secondary and your rear shoe was your primary but that's not the case anymore I've never seen one in a long time that had a shorter uh, brake lining on the front on the front shoe they're all the same size anymore but anyway so we get them tightened up and uh, hang on a minute I'll spare you the noise of that <laughs> okay 
they're tight. This one here, you kind of got to pull up on your, your adjusting cable so you can get your socket onto that one there, but it's not a difficult job. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and run this adjuster a couple, a couple of clicks. You can't turn it one direction, but the other you can. So we'll go ahead and turn that a couple of clicks. And uh, not too long ago, I already repacked those wheel bearings. So I'm not going to take the, uh, the inner bearing out and repack it get them shoes centered so I can go up on there. You see how it's pretty loose? So, we'll run that up about 16 or 8, maybe 9. Maybe start with 4. Still loose. Go up another 25 more clicks or, or 10. If you go too far, then you got to hold that that adjuster spoon out of the way so you can turn it back the other direction. And then I won't have to adjust these brakes anymore. They'll do it automatically. And you don't want your your shoes dragging on your drum. I'm gonna loosen that one click. I gotta push that piece back so I can There we go. Anyway. Got that. Now get my light out of the way. I need to have a handful of rags there to keep the mess down anyway we're going to take this outer bearing since I've got a a packing tool I'll set that on there since that bearing's out you have to take it out we'll step on it freshen that one up again and uh, these are pretty nice. I don't know if you if that's focused there for you or not, but you can see how the grease goes right through the bearing, and it was it was pretty fresh. Uh, if they're really nasty, go ahead and throw them in a parts washer and clean them out and inspect them. And make sure that your bearing isn't pitted or turned blue or anything. And uh, one thing I learned more grease you know if a little grease is good more grease is better well fellas that's not necessarily true you can create a problem with too much grease the bearing won't roll on the race it'll slide because there's so much grease and when it slides instead of rolls it creates friction friction creates heat heat creates damage so don't forget to put your uh, uh, flat sided uh, washer in place and I don't crank these down I mean uh, you can almost hand tighten them but you got to make sure that the, the drum is fully seated and the cotter pin slot and the spindle is as uh, three o'clock to nine o'clock but i've got it, i know i've got it seated and i'll just turn that dude by hand where here's my new cotter pin and uh i know i ain't never going to cook a wheel bearing and uh it's a little better to have a little bit of uh, run out in your bearing than to have it a skunk too tight because they won't last that way. Anyway, 
Uh, and obviously, fellas, with electric brakes, there is no bleeding, unless you want to bleed it with an electric uh, a multimeter. You can uh, hook your meter onto it and set it to ohms, and uh, you know, sip on your Pepsi while your meter bleeds your electric brakes. That's not true. You don't bleed electric brakes. But anyway, that one there is done, and uh, I'm going to take a little bit of the Tin Man's uh, blood type. That's uh, anisees. I don't put a lot on there. Just give it a little bit of a slicking on one half of the stud. When you're on the side of the road and you got a flat and you got to change a tire, and then lug nuts will come off without having to fight, scratch, and claw to get them loose and tear the studs up. You're thankful for that. But anyway, uh, we'll get that wheel put on there, and, and uh, you know, I don't, what, somewhere around 90 foot pounds or so torque on there, but. Uh, I just do German torque specs is what I like, you know, good and tight. But uh, 18 Uga Dugas on the IM, uh, what is it? Uh, the old snap on IM 1500 that's about 28 years old. Three or four Uga Dugas is plenty tight. Uh, but guys, uh, I'm going to. Put the wheel on and set it down and do the other side and get them two done over there and i'm going to be back in business and you guys share like and subscribe and comment if you'd like i appreciate you watching